All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you an actinide bedrock ore processing setup, which will produce a lot of thorium-232 in order to feed our uranium-233 producing plant. Both of these videos will be linked in the description. Also, this build is a neat version of what I posted on my community tab about a month ago. And also, I apologize as this video should have been the first video in the series because you need thorium in order to run the reactors. Anyways, you'll get a lot of it. So without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Now the best place to make the entire plant would be where you have an excellent source of actinide. So here as you can see in the upper left corner of the screen, the actinide bedrock ore is listed as excellent. All of the other metals are either poor or moderate but yeah we need actinide and so I should have built it here but I made the plant somewhere else. Anyways, I am going to get rid of ore slop uh, by just draining it. Uh, there's infinite water and now I'm going to show you how much actinide ore we get from the bedrock ore processing with excellent property. So this whole process took about uh, 8 minutes. I have speeded up the video by like a lot. So we will end up with a lot of actinide bedrock ore which is what we are going to need in order to extract thorium out of it. We are going to prioritize thorium in this build. So once this is done, we got roughly two and a half stacks, actually more than two and a half stacks of uh, actinide bedrock ore along with all of the other five bedrock ore types. So now we are going to process it and use it to feed our uranium-233 producing reactor and that will instead feed the uranium-233 big reactor, which yeah, I made in a previous video. So anyways, I have placed the bedrock ore processor here with the exact amount of ores that we received in order to mimic what uh, was that in that world. Now this first method includes processing vitriol and for that we are going to use the pyrolysis oven. Because when the bedrock ore will be processed in a pyrolysis oven or a combination oven then it will be roasted and that will give you a vitriol as a byproduct. Now this vitriol can be used to process or produce sorry the chlorine and sulfuric acid both of which are needed in order to produce nitric acid and chlorine is needed to prioritize thorium. So I'm going to set up an electrolysis machine which will process the vitriol and now placing down the pipes and that's the connection done. So here's the recipe for it. It will give 500 millibuckets of sulfuric acid and 500 millibuckets of chlorine gas. Also I'll show you an alternative way of obtaining this. But for now, let's go with this and with the latest update, the inserter can get rid of items. So I'm going to use this a lot in this build in order to get rid of all of the excess items that you are going to produce. In this case, it will be iron powder and mercury drops. So make sure that your inserter is in the shredder mode, which should be green and that will get rid of every excess product that you are producing. So here the setup is very simple in order to get rid of everything that you don't want. Now I'm going to set two tanks, one for chlorine, one for sulfuric acid and connect them to the other side of the electrolysis machine. And that will take care of all of the four products that we are going to produce out of this entire setup, which is iron powder, mercury drop, chlorine and sulfuric acid. So with these connections done, now we are also going to roast a lot of the other ores that we produced in order to get as much vitriol as we can get. But we don't really need to process them any further. So I'm just going to get rid of them using the simple method that I showed you before. And now for producing nitric acid, we need sulfuric acid combined with nitre. And producing nitre is very simple when we do it with thermal expansion. Because you need a pulverizer. And the pulverizer, the last pulverizer basically, it should prioritize the secondary output, which will be nitre. Now this will, this pulverizer will take in some sandstone. So on top of it, I'm going to place a cyclic assembler with maximum speed upgrades, though you don't really need as this is pretty fast in itself. And also we are going to produce excess sand, which can be put back into the cyclic assembler. Now on top of the cyclic assembler, in order to produce sand, we need another pulverizer, which will take in cobblestone and convert it into sand. Also make sure to place the nullifier upgrade here cause a byproduct of uh, crushing down cobblestone will be that you are going to produce gravel. So we need to get rid of it. And once this is done on the top, we are going to place an igneous extruder which will produce the cobblestone in the first place so that it can go in the pulverizer. And with that done, we are going to produce an infinite amount of nitre and that can be connected to sulfuric acid and both of these will be 
uh, mixed in a mixer and the mixer will produce nitric acid for us. So make sure to set the mixer properly in order to produce nitric acid and once it's done uh, it should look something like this. Now for the output I'm gonna use a tank cause the normal tank won't work. It will basically break down when you put in nitric acid in it cause it's very corrosive. So you need to use a big ash tank in order to store nitric acid and set it to the proper liquid and once all of this is done I'm gonna supply it power using some uh, cryo stabilized flux ducts and the HE2RF converter and as the ratios were changed this process is now more balanced as it will consume a lot of power so it's not like you are producing infinite amounts of nitre without uh, investing a lot of power in the process and finally I'm going to connect everything using cables some underground some of them will be on the top and all of this to process the vitriol finally we can supplies this system some power and as soon as that's done we should start producing nitre in the background so passively we are going to produce nitre as you can see the process is taking 240,000 hg per second and this nitre will be feeded into the mixer and yeah even if you let this continue it will just keep on storing it inside the machines until the buffer is full Anyway, so now I'm gonna start the process. The pyrolysis oven in itself is very, very fast. Now we are producing vitriol and this vitriol is producing sulfuric acid and chlorine. So here, as you can see, we are producing nitric acid. And finally, when the process is done, we won't really end up with like a lot of these products so 9000 millibuckets of chlorine gas and 18000 millibuckets of nitric acid now this is not a lot now in order to expand your nitric acid production because this can be uh, made completely passively without going down the vitriol route you just need to make nitre a lot of it and then get that nitre into an industrial liquefaction machine because liquefacting nitre will give you 750 millibuckets of nitric acid which is a pretty good ratio so here I have made the similar setup but instead of just using sandstone I am using sandstone stairs as it has a 75% chance of giving a sniter as a secondary byproduct. And in order to expand this process you just need to increase the amount of pulverizers on both the sides as the pulverizers are the only bottleneck that this entire system has. So the liquefactor will produce nitric acid passively without the use of vitriol. Now in order to get chlorine gas without vitriol you will need to use the chlorine pinwheel which is a chance based item that you will find in the loot inside structures. Also when we are not going down the vitriol route then we don't really need to roast any of the ores as it doesn't really give us anything useful and using normal ores or roasted ore in the ore acidizer is the same. So I'm going to provide an alternate path and place down five barrels with chlorine pinwheels in them in order to passively give us some chlorine gas and when this is running in the background it should give us a decent enough backup of nitric acid and chlorine gas now in order to process the actinide bedrock ore either it is the normal one or the roasted one place down two acidizers with one centrifuge in the middle the first acidizer is for washing then it goes in the centrifuge the washed bedrock ore goes in the centrifuge and from the centrifuge it goes in a second ore acidizer which will take in chlorine gas and when treated with chlorine gas the ore will basically prioritize the lower weight of the product that it has so in our case actinide has what uranium and thorium thorium is the lower weight product so when processing with chlorine we'll get more thorium out of it so once the setup is all done i'm gonna connect some chlorine pipes here with a redstone switch in the middle so we can control the amount of chlorine that goes in the acidizer because when we don't want to use this system we can just turn it off this process is not meant to be continuous it is supposed to be batch production so now for the final steps of processing we need two electrolyzers with two strand casters so here i'm gonna place down two electrolyzers one after the other and the strand casters one is for uranium the other one is for thorium so the final product that you are going to get out of the second ore acidizer after processing the bedrock ore with chlorine gas it will go inside the first electrolyzer and we will get some bedrock ore crumbs from that which will go in the second electrolyzer 
So for thorium, I'm gonna set it to nuggets. For uranium, I'm gonna set it to ingots. And then connect the output of the electrolyzers in a following formation using channels and foundry outlet. Now we need to supply both of these electrolyzers with nitric acid. So I'm going to extend some pipes and here also I'm going to use a redstone powered switch in order to control the amount of nitric acid and turn it off when not in use. Now connect the first electrolyzer to the second one, set a servo and here set it to actinide ore crumbs as this will give us additional thorium and uranium. So with that process done, now we need to connect power to both of the ore acidizers. So I'm going to get some cables on the other side. And as we have already connected most of the pipes here, uh, you can connect cables going like this. And finally, the strand casters need water and low pressure steam. Uh, basically, they are going to produce low pressure steam, which we then need to convert back into water. And this can be easily done using condensers, the normal single block condenser as not a lot of it will be used. So I'm going to dig out a 3x3 three three in the middle of the water and the low pressure pipes, place down the condenser and connect them with some pentable coated ducts like this. And a mistake that I made was not supplying them with water beforehand. Make sure you connect the water pipes and supply both of the strand casters with water and then the cycle will go on continuously. Now for storage, I'm using the mass storage units and the first one is for thorium. And for uranium, you can also go with the crate. Anyways, I'm going to turn on the switches now that should fill up the ore acidizer with chlorine, the electrolyzers with nitric acid, and now we are ready to begin the process. So as soon as I start supplying the ores here, first it will be washed, then it goes in the centrifuge, where we can speed up the process by using the overdrive upgrade. Anyways, I forgot to connect the final ore acidizer to the electrolyzer. So here, once the connection is done, then the lower priority bedrock ore should end up in the electrolyzer and that should start giving us the uranium from the red side and thorium from the green side. So yeah, pretty neat. And here I am using two and a half stacks exactly. So let's see how many thorium nuggets we get out of the entire process. Now, one as i told you make sure to uh, fill up water in the strand casters because my process stopped because there was no water in the strand casters so make sure you fill them up and then it will be a continuous cycle it won't really mess up and yeah you should end up with a lot of uh, thorium ore this way and also a lot of uranium which can be converted into sherbidium by processing it into sherbidium so yeah, 15,885 thorium nuggets. Uh, the number is more like uh, 16,000 cause I had to remove some, but here is the process in like slow motion. So with the water uh, for washing, I am using the efficiency upgrade and with the chlorine, I'm not using the efficiency upgrade in the ore acidizer cause it will increase the amount of chlorine that it takes by 300%, which is a lot. Anyway, so yeah, that's all of the actinide bedrock ore processing done and we ended up with over 16,000 thorium nuggets. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. You found it helpful and learned something. If you did, do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Now, if you have any suggestions or questions regarding this build, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to them as soon as possible. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out and stay safe, my dudes.